Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about gradient descent with momentum. Now, I have looked up this topic online and I did not find enough stress on the physical significance of this algorithm and that is why I'm making this video. Now, I've talked about in my previous video on how to become an AI engineer that it is very important you build an expertise in any algorithm that you study. And when I say expertise, it basically means understanding the intuition, the mathematics and knowing how to implement that in coding. I'm not going to discuss the coding part, but we're going to discuss the intuition and the mathematics in a lot of depth. So make sure you watch this video till the end and, and I'm sure that you won't have any doubts and you will have an amazing understanding of this algorithm by the end. Right? So before understanding any algorithm, we need to understand what was the problem that the algorithm was trying to solve? Why do we need gradient descent with momentum when we already have gradient descent? Now, I have made a previous video on gradient descent in which I discussed all of this, which you're seeing on the screen right now. And I would recommend you watch that video first if you do not know what gradient descent is. Just to give you a gist of it, gradient descent was an algorithm which was used to find the best set of weights that are gonna give you a minimum loss, right? This was the equation for gradient descent. Basically, a weight at a particular time step is equal to weight at the previous time step minus a learning rate into the slope of loss function with respect to the weight, right? So basically, you're descending along the gradient to reach the minimum point. Right? So if you're at the right side of the curve, you want to reduce the weight slowly and slowly so you get towards the bottom. And similarly, if you're on the left side of this curve towards somewhere over here, you want to move towards the right slowly so you reach the bottom and get the minimum loss possible. So what is the problem with this? Let me show you what problems could come up, right? And that is how we get and that is how we can get started with gradient descent with momentum. You saw a loss uh, with respect to weights curve like this. Let's imagine if the curve looks something like this, right? And you can see that this curve is getting a little flat over here at some point. This is also called as the plateau. And the actual point in the graph where the loss is truly the minimum value, that is called as the global minima. And our goal is to reach the global minima. Now let's see what the problem can come up when we're using gradient descent. In gradient descent, let's say we start at somewhere towards the right hand side and we're taking steps to come down. Gradient descent, what gradient descent does is it takes the slope at just the previous time step in order to make a decision about moving forward, right? And it will always take a fixed step size. So as it comes down, let's say it reaches somewhere over here where the plateau is. At this, at, at this point, the slope is zero. So the model will get fooled into thinking that, hey, I have reached the global minima and we have got the perfect loss. However, this is not the case, right? We can see we still have to move forward a lot of steps before we reach the global minima. What could we have done here to avoid this issue? That is where momentum comes in. In physics, momentum is equal to mass into velocity, right? Physically, when you're descending down a slope, right? If a car is coming down a slope, you say that it's gathering more momentum. What you would want is that you would want the algorithm to understand that, hey, since I'm descending so fast over here, since the slope was so high just in a previous time steps, it is not possible that I could have reached the minima so soon. So let's just keep going, right? That is one way to understand why momentum could play a role. Basically see that since you're descending so fast, you would want to keep going. The second way to understand another problem is that once I'm at the top of this curve, I would want to take bigger steps, right? Because I can see if I'm standing over here, the minima is a very far away, right? So I would ideally want to take bigger and bigger steps, right? Because the slope is decreasing very fast, right? So I also want to keep moving fast. Once I reach towards the bottom, right, I can see that the slope is getting flattened or we can say that if a car is coming down, its momentum is going to reduce. So as the momentum reduces, I would want to take smaller steps, right? So I'll take smaller steps like this so that I slowly converge at the minima. So in a way, I'm varying how fast and how slow I come down based on my previous momentum. That is what this algorithm is doing. If you understood this, you have understood why we need momentum. And let me show you what the equation is. And now it's just going to seem very basic because you have understood what the model is really trying to do. Initially, we had an equation like this, right? That we take the previous weight, subtract it by the learning rate, multiplied by just the previous slope, just the previous uh, gradient. Now what we're going to be... 
Now what we're gonna be doing is the new equation for weight updation is gonna look something like this, right? That the current weight at a particular time step is equal to the previous weight minus the learning rate into a new term V of T, right? So the learning rate is gonna remain the same. We're not gonna alter that. But we have added a new term and V of T has to be calculated as this, as beta into V of T minus one plus one minus beta into the change of loss with respect to the previous weight. So this is, this equation is also called as the exponentially weighted average because basically what's happening is that you are not only taking the previous gradient into account, you're taking into account all the previous slopes, all the previous gradients, right? So the model has knowledge of how the slope has been decreasing based on that it is going to take steps so this beta that you're seeing is also called as the momentum hyperparameter and you can see what role it has if beta becomes zero this equation will simply become v of t is equal to change of loss with respect to the previous weight and this will simply become gradient descent so let's look at how it actually works in practice right so let me take v of two right so initially v of one is going to be kept as zero right the next v of 2 is going to be according to this equation beta into v of 1 plus 1 minus beta into the change of loss with respect to the change in the first weight or it can be written as this right because v1 is equal to 0 initially for the next updation you can similarly calculate v3 is equal to beta into v2 plus 1 minus beta into change of loss with respect to the second weight so basically what happens is, as you can see that as we keep getting V3, V4, V5, this will contain the value of all the previous loss, right? Because, because V3 contains information of loss with respect to the second weight. And V2 in turn contains information of change in loss with respect to the first weight. So in a way, V of T, when we write beta into V of T minus 1, V of T minus 1 is containing information of all the past gradients. So if beta is a high value, if it's 0.9, if it's 0.95, then we're giving a lot of importance to all the previous accumulated gradients. And this term, let's say beta is 0.9, this will become 1 minus 0.9 or basically 0.1. 0 0.1 into the previous change in loss with respect to the previous weight. Basically, when you choose a high value of beta, you're giving more importance to the previous accumulation of weights and a little less important to the immediate past gradient, right? So that is what this equation does. It basically takes into account how the slope is changing. Based on that, it updates the weight. So I feel that is all you need to know about the mathematics of this equation, right? Basically the problem was we need to change the slope, right? We need to move faster at certain points of the curve and we need to move slower in certain points of the curve. And this will also help us avoid uh, plateaus as well and basically the convergence right the convergence is gonna be really smooth if you use gradient descent with momentum so that was all for this video hope this video helped you understand the physical significance and the mathematics if you did like it do like this video and subscribe to this channel and see you in the next video